So far we've talked about inference in terms of the strength of evidence, so the evidence that we have against the null and for the alternative. Another approach uses a p-value to make a decision. So either you reject or you fail to reject the null hypothesis, basically turning this into a binary decision. Um, now there's problems with that, um, with turning this into a dichotomous kind of thing, um, but we'll talk about that later. So to make a decision like this, you basically have to set a cutoff. How small does your p-value need to be before you are gonna consider the evidence strong enough to reject the null. So this is called the significance level. This is just like a cutoff for deciding how small your p-value needs to be. And you can set your cutoff anywhere, but a very common cutoff that's often used is alpha equals 0.05. So basically, anytime your p-value is less than alpha, so maybe if your p-value is less than 0.05, in that case, you would make the decision to reject the null, and then your conclusion would be that you have sufficient evidence, right? You've set a cutoff, and this is low enough, so you have sufficient evidence to conclude whatever your alternative hypothesis was, right? You've rejected the null, and you've concluded the alternative. Whereas if your p-value is greater than alpha, greater than 0.05, or whatever that value is, then you would fail to reject the null. And since your p-value was not small enough, you say you have insufficient evidence. So insufficient evidence to conclude the alternative, right? You're always trying to um, reject the null and conclude the alternative. And this is a cutoff for deciding if you have enough evidence or if you don't have enough evidence. And in a Google form, you're going to do an activity to see how exactly the significance level alpha is related to the amount of evidence required. So in section 1.2, we used a sample of 361 heart transplants to test whether the heart transplant death rate at St. George's is higher than the national average of 15%. So first of all, let's think about what is the expected number of deaths in this sample. So expected meaning, what would we expect if the null were true? So we have 361 in our sample, and the null hypothesis death rate is 15%. So the expected number of deaths in the sample would be 54.15. So let's say we set our significance level to alpha equals 0.1. How many deaths would there have to be to convince us that the death rate is higher at St. George's? So I'm going to use the theory-based inference applet. And notice that we're back to talking about proportions, right? Either the patient lives or they don't. Um, and so that's a categorical data. We would summarize that with proportions. We're talking about 361 transplants, so that would be our sample size. And we're trying to figure out how big the number of deaths would have to be before we would find it convincing. So let's start low. Let's just do 55, just a little tiny bit more than expected. So we're going to do a test of significance. The national average is 0.15, so that's our null hypothesis value. And we're trying to see if the death rate is higher at St. George's. So we're going to change this to greater than and click Calculate. So not surprisingly, with the count only 55, just barely more than expected, um, our p-value is very large, 0.45. Our evidence is very weak, um, so this is not strong enough. What if we change the count? What if we did 60? Okay, so our evidence is stronger now. Our p-value is smaller, but it's still not small enough, right? We're setting our alpha level right now as 0.1. The p-value is greater than the alpha level, so that means that we don't have enough evidence. So what I want you to do in the Google form is I want you to play around with these counts and figure out how big does the count need to be at each of the different significance levels, 0 0.1, 0 0.05, and 0 0.01. Then I'll ask you to make a general statement about the relationship between alpha and the strength of evidence.